Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 11 of Questions and Answers. In this episode, I'm going to answer five Lightroom-related questions. Our first question is from Gary. I am really struggling with Lightroom in keeping my colors and detail real life. When I start using highlights, clarity, shadows, etc., I end up with something that looks HDR-like. All of us run into this now and then. It's very easy to just over-process our images. And sometimes we want to over-process our images. Sometimes some people's style is that over-processed look. But many people like to keep it looking real. And what you need to do, if that is your style, is to be very careful with just three sliders. They're in the basic panel. And there are these three right here under the presence section of the basic panel, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. And this is more apt to happen or be a problem when you have a scene that has a lot of dynamic range. With this image here, you could see that we have some very bright highlights and we have some very dark shadows. So this image, this scene, has a lot of dynamic range. And if you're not careful with the clarity, vibrance, and saturation sliders, you could make this look kind of hyper real. And really what you need to do is just be very light with the sliders. I don't know how else I could tell you what to do or how to train you to be careful, except to just try to keep them at very low values. Typically, most of us like a lot of clarity in our shots. We like them to be sharp. And since clarity is kind of mid-tone sharpness, we tend to bring it up quite high, sometimes in the 50s, 60s. Then we'll bring vibrance up a little bit, and then we'll bring saturation up a little bit. And then you can see we're starting to get these really oversaturated colors with this hyper detail. And that, of course, is... Um, a signature of HDR photography so we want to avoid that if if that's what you want to avoid I should clarify some people this is their style they like these types of oversaturated um, hyper realistic shots and that's fine if that's what you're going for that's how you do it go to this present part presence part of the basic tab and really bring up these three sliders quite a bit but if you're going for something a little more realistic you really have to use these nominally. Uh, clarity, I would say, try to keep it under 20. Vibrance and saturation, I would keep those under 10. And generally speaking, I don't use, I don't often use saturation at all. I'll just bring vibrance up, um, you know, between 10 and 15 at most. And you have a pretty realistic looking image if you do that with these sliders. So. That's really all I could suggest. Just be very careful with these sliders. Also, I would say be careful a little bit with contrast. If you start bringing contrast up a little bit too much, it starts looking a little bit more um, HDR look also. So uh, just be mindful of those four sliders. Contrast, clarity, vibrant, saturation, and use, use those nominally. And I think you'll find that your image will look more real. And that, of course, is the look that Gary wants. So that's how you would go about doing that. Next um, question is from Darren. I shoot RAW plus JPEG and when I import them into Lightroom from the SD card only the RAW files get imported. Is there a way to get the JPEGs imported too? Uh, sure, there's a setting. It's in preferences. If you have a Mac you go up to the Lightroom menu and go down to preferences. If you have a PC the preferences is under the edit menu. Either way, once you open Preferences, go to the General tab, I think. And right here, this checkbox, Treat JPEG Files Next to RAW Files as Separate fo Photos. Make sure that checkbox is checked. And when it is, when you import images, you will import both the RAW file and the JPEG file, and they'll be available to each process in Lightroom. If you do not have that checkbox checked, both images will get copied to the folder, but only the RAW file will get imported into Lightroom. So the JPEG will be taken off your SD card and put into the folder wherever your Lightroom folder is, but it won't be imported into, uh, into Lightroom. So just check that box for Darren and you'll solve that issue and both the JPEG and the RAW file will get imported into Lightroom just fine and you'll be able to process both of them. 
Next question is from Richard. Which tutorial describes measuring the increase in saturation of the sky, then subtract that amount of increased saturation to the blue water, which you did not want? Well, I get questions a lot. People asking me, which video did you do this and which video did you do that? And to tell you the truth, I don't really have anything indexed, very disorganized. Tell you, when I started doing videos, I didn't anticipate that I'd be doing them for two and a half, three years, and I'd have over 600 videos. So I never really um, indexed the videos. So when people ask me questions about which video I did such and such in, it takes me a while to find it. So instead of telling Richard right now which video it is, I'm just going to demonstrate it right here. We're going to go to this image again. And really, all this is is if you come in and it's mainly with saturation and you're bringing saturation up to make your sky bluer, but it also made your water bluer and you don't want the water blue, that blue at least, get a brush, reset your brush so everything's at zero, then take note of the basic tab of where you turn saturation up. For the sake of this argument, let's say we turn saturation up to 79. Okay, so saturation's at 79. So we're going to go to our brush, and we're just going to take the saturation slider, and we're going to move it to minus 79. And, and that's all you need to do. And then you're going to come in here with the brush, and you're going to just take away that saturation we just dialed in. Quite a difference, as you can see. And of course, I'm just going real sloppy and real quick here. So, so there. Just like that. So we have now the saturation in the sky and in the windows of the buildings, but we don't have that saturation down here. Now we could then affect this. We could tweak it a little bit, you know, bring a little saturation into that water. But that's how you do it. It's very simple as that. You could actually do that with anything, uh, not just saturation, meaning if you uh, turn clarity way up on something because you want something to have a high amount of clarity, but you want something else not to have that same amount of clarity, you could do the exact same thing. Get a new brush and then take clarity on the brush down the amount you need it to be and then brush away the clarity where you don't want it. You could do the same thing for any of these contrast highlights, whatever. So just remember that and see if that helps. Um, hopefully that answered Richard's question. Next question is from Celeste. For white balance, do you use auto white balance, have a preference of daylight, for example, or do all your white balance modifications in post-processing? I do all my white balance modifications in post-processing just about all the time. That's because I shoot raw. Now, I've seen a lot of people teach Lightroom, teach Photoshop, teach people, and they say that they shoot, um, they'll say they have their camera on, on shade all the time, their white balance on shade. They use shade, but they say they shoot raw. Well, it doesn't matter. You could have it on anything. You could have your camera white balance on tungsten, but you'll get all those choices in post. So I just leave mine on auto and then I come up here and we're in the basic tab where it says as shot. You can see I have auto, daylight, cloudy. I have everything available to me. And if you go out shooting and you have your camera set on shade, you're gonna, your image is going to look like this when you import it into Lightroom. And you could just come in here and then change it back to auto and get an auto setting or or whatever you like, you know. So you could always change it if you're in RAW. That's the great advantage of shooting in RAW. So I, as I mentioned, just keep it as shot. Now on the other hand, if you're not a RAW shooter, maybe your camera doesn't have the capability to shoot RAW images. If it does, I would encourage you just shoot RAW. It's It will help you a lot. It will give you a lot more uh, options in post to process your image. But if for some reason you can't and you have JPEGs, now I know a lot of sport photographers, they'll shoot JPEGs, especially the guys who have to um, wire their images at halftime of a football game, let's say. Uh, they don't have time to process raw files, so they're shooting JPEG. So they really have to have their white balance right. And the reason is, is the white balance is really baked into the JPEG. Here is a stock photo, it's a JPEG image. And if you go over here to white balance, you could see it just has auto and custom. Custom means you're gonna come in here and do it yourself with these sliders. 
So there's not a lot of leeway here. You have to get it right in camera, or at least you should do everything possible to get it right in camera. Now, if you are a JPEG shooter, what I recommend, if you're outside shooting, if it's cloudy, set, set your white balance in your camera to cloudy. If it's sunny out, set it to daylight. Um, if you're inside and it's tungsten lighting, set it to tungsten. On the other hand, if you're in an office building, let's say, and they're using fluorescent lighting, make sure you set it to fluorescent. That's if you're shooting JPEG. Make sure you get it right in camera because it's more difficult to correct in post. Now, with that said, there is a little trick you could do. Is if you you have a raw file available, is you could make presets of all of these different uh, white balances. And once you make them, let's say you do a daylight, then save it as a preset, then do a, a cloudy, save it as a different preset, and so on. Then you could go to your JPEG image and you could apply that preset. So if you accidentally shot this image in tungsten and you needed to put it to shade, you'd be able to do that because you have the preset. It's not perfect. It's not as good as the raw file, but it will get you close and it will help. I do have a video that demonstrates how this is done and I will uh, link that video below this video. So look in the description below this video and you'll find that video. I believe it was a Lightroom quick tip video that I demonstrated how to do that. So that will help you if you shoot JPEG where you could make presets of your white balances so that you could apply it to the JPEG. Other than that, to answer Celeste's question, I just shoot in auto almost all the time. Um, I mean 95% of the time. Uh, very rarely will I switch my camera auto auto. When I do, it's usually because there's mixed lighting, meaning there's an open window with sunlight coming through and we have fluorescent lights in the room and I have to do some type of custom white balance and then I'll do something then and then it gets a little bit more complicated. So that answers Celeste's question, I think. All right, next question is from Grace. Just wondering if there's a tutorial of how to remove glare on glasses. If not, could you please make one? Well, no, I can't make one because in my opinion, there is no efficient, effective way to remove glare from someone's glasses in post. I've watched at least three or four videos that claim they show how it's done. And really, it's horrible. They don't do it well. It doesn't work well. It's really something that you have to be very conscious of when you're capturing the image. So when you're taking the picture, you have to make sure that you account for the glare or any potential glare in someone's glasses. Now, I will devote a video on this. I have more plans to expand my videos very soon, and I'll be in the studio where I'll explain how you could get around having the glare in glasses. Um, typically, you know, this is actually relatively easy in a studio situation. Basically, you're going to have the light source off to the side. You're going to either have it off to the side or you're going to have your, your subject tilt their head away from the light source, and that will push the glare off their glasses. Another, if, the, if you have on-camera flash, then it's more problematic because the flash is shooting straight at your subject. You could have them push their glasses a little more towards the tip of their nose, that helps, or you could have them tilt their head, like their forehead toward the camera and their chin away from the camera. Now you gotta be careful you don't give them a double chin when you do that, but if you do something like that, that tends to move the glare away off the glasses. So you have them kind of tilting their head in a certain way. So that's pretty much what you would do is you would um, try to get your light source off to the side if possible. Uh, your key light and your secondary light, you want to make sure that that's if you are using a secondary light source or even a reflection like a foam reflector off to the side for fill. You want to make sure that that isn't causing an issue either. This helps a lot if you're in the studio and you have um, studio lights 
you could you know very easily see um, you know what your light is doing and adjust them accordingly it's a little more difficult if you're out in the field and particularly if you're using on-camera flash so sorry grace to answer your question that was really a wordy reply I can't because there really isn't a good way and and um, I know some I'm sure people are gonna start posting links below and I encourage you to do it maybe because I like I said I only watch three or four but if you know of a really good method where you could get rid of glare in glasses in post using any program I don't care what it is post the link below and uh, share it with everyone and let's see if there is a way and if I think it's a good way I'll learn it and then I'll um, I'll do a video on it as well but as far as I've found at least to this point there isn't really a good method to remove the glare in someone's glasses in post-production so take care of it when you're actually taking the shot so that's it for episode 11 very wordy I'm sorry about that answering these five questions but um, I hope it answered those questions and I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos I really do appreciate it I got a lot of neat stuff planned we've been working on some stuff the last several days um, hopefully by the end of the month I could announce some great stuff that's going to be happening so thank you again everyone I really do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon